Now, for the top story tonight, last January, 15-year-old Hydea Pendleton, an honor student, was standing in a park near her Chicago home. Suddenly, a shootout erupted, and the young girl was killed. First Lady Michelle Obama attended Hydea's funeral. Joining us now from Chicago, Nathaniel Pendleton, the girl's father. First of all, we're very sorry for your loss, sir, and appreciate you coming on this evening. How do you see you. the policing controversy? How do you see it? Well, first, I want to say that um, stop and frisk against uh, minorities, uh, that's, that's totally unfair because this isn't just happening uh, in black neighborhoods it's in, or Hispanic neighborhoods. It's happening everywhere. And a uh, perfect example of that is Sandy Hook also. So the thing is, I think tougher gun laws is much better than uh, is a much better deterrent than just making people, you know, pulling, criminalizing, uh, criminalizing people for what you may think. Okay, this All guy right. has dreads. But you know, look. I disagree with you, and you know that, and I appreciate you coming on here. It isn't all over the place. Not my neighborhood in Long Island, okay? You don't have drive-by shootings there. You don't have gangs there. The affluent white neighborhoods are protected from this kind of madness. The two guys charged with killing your daughter were gangsters mm -hmm. who were looking to kill other gangsters. And this has been going on for years in Chicago in certain neighborhoods. Not on the Gold Coast, mm -hmm. all right? Not in uh, the suburbs of Chicago. It's going on in your neighborhood. It's going on in poor black neighborhoods. So I say that you flood the zone with police, just as they have here in New York City. And then the police use the stop and frisk tactic to discourage criminals, to discourage them from bringing guns onto the street. Now, you've seen a tremendous drop in murder here in New York City. Not very different from Chicago, by the way. Ethnic city, plenty of folks. You've seen it come down from more than 2,000 to 400. Now, it would work in Chicago, but they simply won't do it because of social pressure. So in, in light of what happened to your daughter, do you think you might reconsider? I, I, I can't reconsider because it could be a lot of innocent young men being criminalized for no, but they're not, though. They're just, just walking they're up the street. They're patted down and then they're allowed to go on their way. Granted, it's an annoyance. It's an intrusion. It, and it, you could construe it as an insult. But if you but look I at where the different. crime is and where the problems are, they're not going to be patting white people down in Bloomingdale's. Go ahead. But you don't agree that uh, that that's all depending on how that officer feels that morning. Look, you know, if it's the easy to say does, that it's just look. a quick it's just a quick pat down, but most of the time it isn't. It's you know get on the ground. You, so you know, are you are you telling me you don't trust the police? I'm not saying I don't trust them. I'm saying that that's a lot of power being given to them. It is. To be it able, is and, to, and I to, agree to with you 100 percent. It is a lot of power given to the individual officers who randomly select people to pat down. There's no doubt about it. You're absolutely right. But what is the greater good? I feel so sorry for you and your family. I mean, your daughter was so lovely and, and was going to have a great life. She was an honor student. There's no way, yes. there's no way this should have ever happened. Yet if you use aggressive police statistics as proven here in New York City, you will cut this kind of madness down. We have to pay a but price you, sometimes. But you know what? I, I think tougher gun laws would have kept that kid in jail. How? How? Because you have the toughest it, it, gun laws in the country in Chicago and Illinois. That's not going to stop no. the criminals from getting them. No, not necessarily, because the thing is, in New York, if you get caught with a gun on the streets, you do three years. No question. I mean, you, you, you're you going to do that, that three years. But you have that law on the book in Illinois. They just don't enforce it. Well, that's the subject. <laughs> you have it. That's the subject. All right. But still, <laughs> if you discourage these thugs from carrying, if they don't carry, then the murder mm -hmm. rate goes down. I'll give you the last word. I would say... Putting three years and making examples of them does goes a whole lot further than just pulling everyone over saying, I'm going to frisk you. Now, don't get me wrong. You do have your subjects. These these police officers know who the guys are that that's carrying the guns. It's, it's no uh, secret to it. 
We just need tougher laws to be able to keep them in jail. All right. And I agree with you there. Absolutely. They should be mandatory for anyone carrying an illegal firearm or committing a crime with one. Ms. Pendleton, thanks. And one footnote, you might want to check out the Hydea Pendleton Foundation, which is trying to improve things in Chicago. Details are on BillOReilly.com.